Uh, I was like, yo, CL, like, let's like make a group with like with Cinecal or so I'd like you guys do a song and then that's kind of how just like Murder Face kind of like came about. I was just like, yo, we should do like a group. Cause like CL was gonna do like a song with 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 Cinecal. Um and then Cinecal was like, yo, can I bring in my boy Shells? And Shells, like I kind of knew from the Royal Peasants, because he was like part of that. It was like Logics, uh, Flex, Lost One, Miriam, and Shells, Cinecal. And I had known them known them from from Logics' uh spot, the the stu the Udio, the Uder Water. And it was like right by Outwater and St. Antoine. And it was like it was basically like a crossroads. You know, yeah, of, of all of Montreal's like England t English talent and and some French too, because that's where I like met Monkey, and Yo, like Monkey that was so cool. I met Monkey there. I met so many. I met Mark the Magnanimous <clears throat> there, and met, like that place was just like it was this this like it, like Bohemian like like transit station. It was just like. It, uh, like Montreal rappers, like drug, like street people, drug dealers, poets, like j just like all walks of life, like came through that that place. Like whether you're like buy weed or fucking recording music or whatever, and like it was just like that. That was like a very like f like formative kind of like stage of my life too. Very like interesting. I like made a bunch of music there with like logics and like learned a lot about like religion and like um, the uh, you know um, the uh, Hebrew Israelites and like, like that whole thing. Like, yeah, I mean, I like I know in explicit detail what you mean. Yeah, because then like that whole, like man like so many things like happened and I'm just like trying to like recount it all and it's just like just like when did that happen what year like i'm just like i'm trying to like piece everything together and it's like i mean there's it's like, it's like you're still getting this general sense of things so it's like you start off with them post high school you get the reputation in you get involved in this bigger projects the royal peasants kind of be i heard about this spot before right um basically uh, uh the way it's been brought yeah, up yeah that was like a legendary like, like he built about. like a studio like he built a sound proof studio in his loft that like unfortunately when he had to leave there like it just got like i guess they just demolished it or something but it was just like he spent like a few grand on like soundproofing that like this like amazing thing like we made like a lot of songs there there's like hundreds of songs that were like recorded there not that I wasn't a part of all of them, no, but, but there like, was just like a lot of I like... think it's like really important to talk about just the, cause it kind of goes back to that, like this, this global theme that keeps recurring as we talk to different people, mostly Ismail brings it up a lot, but I guess it's a fair thing. It's the idea of collectives, um, and labels versus collectives. And really what happened there was some collective shit. It was like, you pick a resource, you could find it there and people wanted to be there that was the other side of it like it was like people saw the bubbling of what bigger was coming is what i understood it and they made yeah. shit happen and it was like nifty as you described it just everybody from different walks of life and it's it's like fucking blessed just the idea that these kinds of places could exist almost like these neutral grounds where like people yeah. could congregate and actually get past the egos and the whatever whatever because chances are there's going to be somebody in the room that could mark somebody you know it's very likely it would, that that's what was so crazy about it. It's just like, there's this like hippy dippy chick there. There's just like this girl that does a braid up. Oh, here's a guy. That, he's just like a fucking graffiti, like rapper. Oh, this guy's a rapper. Oh, this guy's a drug dealer. Oh, this guy's a fucking, you know, it's just like, and they were all in the same room together and just like chilling. And it was just like this, this weird uh, transient space. But that sounds like Montreal. More than a mm -hmm. lot of things I've heard sound like Montreal. Like people think they try to like I bought his Montreal shit with these weird. Th That's the most Montreal shit I ever done heard. That is that is really what it is when you go to any one of these events that are popping. 
it's those group of people at the jazz fest all the everybody you described there's who you're going to see in different portions with parents at the jazz fest yeah pretty much <laughs> so I, I like that a lot that's interesting i'm going to use that as a barometer for my new what montreal is type thing to move forward so i appreciate that a lot okay. this has been fucking blessed so far you know man I, you know i am montreal through and through like born and raised you know just like this city it's it's a gift and a curse it's the beautiful weather it's shitty weather it's, it's you know broken streets but like mad trees on each street like we got like so many like trees in the neighborhoods and it was just like you grew up around like nature but you're still in the city it's just like what good street bad street like one block is like cool like the next block is like you know you might see someone get shot it's just like that's that's montreal i, don't know. <laughs> I mean it's what's weird is how like n that's not adg anymore and not anymore not, no and no. so there's like a whole bunch of people coming through that are never gonna like yo like it's gentrified it's like really really gentrified now yeah well i i saw it happen but i was also like i was out of like i haven't lived in NDG since like 2010 or 11 Mm, and I moved uptown. I lived uptown, and then after uptown, I moved to Verdun, and then that's where I've been since. I was in yeah. Verdun in like 2012 ish for a bit. I had the most amazing arrangement. I fucked up, and then I left Verdun for NDG, and I've been here since like 2012. Um, I would, I'd love to move back to NDG, you know, but it's just like it's it's crazy expensive now. I'm like, it's just, just crazy to think about. Like, I swear the average rent price in NDG goes up a hundred dollars a year, no problem. And you're like, wait, wasn't it just like a thousand for a three and a half, and now it's like twelve hundred for a three and a half? And that's not, that's in like my, my neighborhood, which is like Fielding Rosedale type shit, which is not supposed to be like. Twelve hundred dollars for a three and a half, you know, like that's some yeah. like serious numbers. Um, but that's where we're at with it, and it's like I suppose it's cool, but I don't know. It's just like, like I mean, I grew up when like you know McDonald's was there. I wasn't like around yeah. that part, yeah, but like, I used to have birthday parties at that McDonald's and shit, and like my parents would be Same like, you, "You can't go on Walkley," and I'd be like, "I had, Why? I had my first uh, McDonald's pizza there." Mm. Yo, those McDonald's pizzas were lit. All right, so... Like yeah. So, so let's go...